let's talk about our aperture tab. Now, our aperture tab is basically like a set of windows inside of another window. Or another way to talk about it is a pinhole. I'm only looking through this small section. I want to see what's inside of this small area. So what I can do is I can turn on a pinhole and I'm going to make mine a square. And I'm going to position this square right over my beam. So I'm going to click on the edge and I'm going to go and I'm going to move this and drop it right over my beam. And I'm going to expand it so it covers my area that I'm looking at. So basically now what I've done is I've created a region of interest. I'm interested in what's inside the square. I'm not so concerned about what's outside the square, but I'm using that pinhole or that square aperture to isolate what I'm interested in. So only the information that's inside that square is being calculated now. Everything outside is being ignored. I can change the size, the shape, or the location of that window, or I can manually do it all up in this little window here. Next, this is a feature that Beam Gauge Professional has. This is what's called partitioning. So let's say I want to be able to see two areas of interest at the same time. How do I do that? Well, I'm basically, I'm going to set up a partition right here, and I'm going to move him over here. Now, I click this little button here that says Add Partition, and it sets him as a partition. Now I can move and create another one. Move my window over here, and I'm going to set a partition here, and I'm going to add. Now I've got two different partitions that I can see detail in one window and the other window at the same time. Now if I want to be able to see results for those, if I want to see a beam diameter, maybe I've got a laser beam in one of each of those spots. If I want to be able to see results of each one of those, I can do that. I can grab my results for my first partition. Now all of my numbers that are being computed are for what's in the red box. And I can grab any one of these numbers. Maybe I'm interested in this beam diameter number. If I hold down my left mouse button and I drag that result over, I can drop him inside of that window. And now I'll be able to see the results for that particular area. If I want to do the same for partition number two, I can. I just select partition number two. Now my beam diameter numbers are based off of what's in number two. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it over and I'm going to drop it into number two. And I can move him. So that's my beam diameter in partition number two. In any of the results, we can drag and we can move them over there. Well, if I get tired of them, then I can just click on it and hit the little red X and it makes it disappear. So that's one advantage that, that Beam Gauge Professional has over our Beam Gauge Standard, is the ability to do partitions. We can do partition, as many as partitions as would like to. We've seen some customers using up to 64 partitions. That's a lot of partitions. It's a lot of information, so we recommend you have a pretty high-end computer if you're going to do that. This next menu is called an Auto Aperture. Auto Aperture is an auto-sizing partition or region of interest. We use this to be able to help isolate the beam. And we'll talk about it a little bit more in detail as we go along. But auto aperture is there. It's used to be able to help isolate your beam from any spurious information that's around your beam that you don't care about. So let's get rid of some of these partitions here. And we're going to go back to our beam. So here's our beam inside of our partition. What auto aperture does is auto aperture is going to help spatially filter. And it's drawn at two times your computed beam diameter. So your beam diameter is over here on the, on the very next. So we're going, to, we're going to select a circle. So right now what we're seeing is we're seeing our beam diameter is being drawn in the mint green color, right around in this pink, this pink beam diameter colors. That's, if I were to measure that beam, that green circle would equal 
these numbers that are being displayed right here. I like to call this my warm fuzzy. This is just showing me where my beam is, how big around my beam is. Okay? An auto aperture quite often is gonna help us be able to improve that number. If we use that auto aperture, it says everything inside, just like our wide aperture we're showing, everything inside is calculated. Everything else is thrown away. But this green circle shows me where my number is actually coming from. Got a beam that's running, but we're overdriving our camera. Let's turn off some of the busyness on our screen here. So I'm gonna block the beam real quick, and we're gonna do ultra cal. Now we can see a lot more information about our laser. But one thing that's very noticeable is that we're actually overdriving the camera. When we start to overdrive the camera, we're gonna have bad things happen to the camera. If we overdrive it too much, we're actually gonna damage the camera. So we actually wanna be able to use some attenuation to bring that signal level down. So on the front of our camera today, we've actually got a couple of ND filters to be able to bring that level down to a much more acceptable level for the camera. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to use the exposure time and we're going to reduce some of the signal getting, signal getting into the software from the camera. So we've reduced that down a little bit. And we're going to re-ultra cal. There we go. Now let's turn off some of our other displays because we're kind of right in the way. So here's our laser. We're able to see our beam diameter is right around where it should be. But if we turn off some of our functions, such as UltraCal, you can see our beam diameter goes all haywire. Starts reporting too big. So ultra cal is very important, and our apertures are gonna be very important. They're gonna change our numbers. So right now our beam diameter is reporting way too big because we haven't zeroed the system yet. Once we zero the system, then when we make a measurement, we're only measuring the laser, and we're not measuring the laser plus or minus some of this ambient light that we're picking up. So once we zero the camera like we did with ultra cal, you can see that beam diameter is a lot more accurate a lot more centered around the beam. But if we turn off some of our apertures, we can also see that our beam size is kind of fluctuating. Okay? If we use auto aperture, auto aperture is gonna place itself out there and it's gonna help stabilize that beam diameter number. So we can see just by clicking on ultra cal and auto aperture, how much of a difference it's actually gonna make. It's improving our setup. The more we improve it, the more accurate we're going to be. Profiles. We have the ability to show a couple of different profiles. 1D slices is kind of what we'll talk about and we'll show them. So I'm going to turn those on over here on our tools menu. We're going to turn on our profile for X. And we'll go back and we'll turn on our cursors to our peak. So here is a 1D slice right through the beam profile. So this beam profile here is the same beam profile that we're seeing across this bottom line. Some people see things in 1D a lot more than they will in a 2D or a 3D. So that's what our profiles tab does. It allows us to be able to overlay a, overlay a Gaussian fit. It allows us to be able to see just 1D slice information a lot more. We can do that for both our X and our why.